Now that we've talked about probability a little bit, let's talk about a probability distribution. So the first question is, what actually is a probability distribution? So a probability distribution is just a table that assigns a probability to each possible outcome. So we list all of the possible outcomes that could happen in a probability experiment, and then each of their probabilities of happening. We had previously talked about how the sum of all the possible outcomes had to be equal to 1, and so the sum of all of these probabilities must be equal to 1 as well. So when we're looking at a probability distribution, the sum of all of the probabilities must be equal to 1. So here's an example of a probability distribution. We have the first column, which is the x values. These are all of the possible outcomes. And then on the right, we have their probabilities. So the probability of getting a 1 on this probability experiment would be 1 fourth. The probability of getting a 2 is 1 eighth, etc. And we can double check adding all of these probabilities, 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 3 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth, is equal to 1. So this actually is a probability distribution. Now let's look at this example. We see all of the x values, all of the possible outcomes of this probability experiment, and then on the right there are probabilities. However, this time when we add up the probabilities, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.6 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.3, we can see that the sum is actually 1.2 which means this is not a probability distribution because the sums are not equal to 1. Let's look at one more example. Here I have my x values, the possible outcomes, and their probabilities. If I try to add these up, negative 0.3 plus 0.7 plus 0.6, I do get 1, which is really good. However, you'll notice this first probability right here is negative, and we can't have negative numbers as probabilities. Probabilities have to be between 0 and 1. So this isn't a probability distribution either. So the basic rules, the probabilities need to add up to be 1, and all of the probabilities must be valid, so I need them all to be between 0 and 1. When looking at probability distributions, one of the things that we can do is find the mean. We denote the mean by mu, and we get it's the summation of x times p of x. So let's break down exactly what that means. The first step, we do have two columns in our probability distributions, one x and one p of x. x are my possible outcomes, p of x the probability. And we're going to multiply the x column by the p of x column. So multiply each outcome by its probability. And then the second step would be to add these numbers up. And once we do that, we would have the mean. So let's look at some examples. So here's a probability distribution that looks at rolling a die. The possible outcomes would be 1 through 6, and probability each side has a probability of 1 sixth. So let's see what the mean number of a die roll would be. So I'm going to start this by adding a third column onto my table here of x times p of x. And so now we can just multiply across. 1 times 1 sixth is 1 sixth. 2 times 1 sixth is 2 sixths. 3 times 1 sixth is 3 sixth, 4 times 1 sixth is 4 sixth, 5 times 1 sixth is 5 sixth, and finally 6 times 1 sixth is 6 sixth. And then we just need to add these up. So we have 1 sixth plus 2 sixth plus 3 sixth plus 4 sixth plus 5 sixth plus 6 sixth, which gives us 21 over 6, or a mean of 3.5. Here's another example of a probability distribution, and I went ahead and added on to my last column here of x, p of x, so we can find the mean. So we start by multiplying across. 0 times 0.85 is 0. zero or 1 times 0.12 is 0.12. 2 times 0 0.015 is 0.03. 3 times 0.01 is 0.03. And 4 times 0 0.005 is 0.02. We then need to add these numbers up, and when we do, we get 0.2. So the mean here would be 0 